Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week, Byron's back over the sea to Sky to see Scott McKenzie tracking down foxes. It's lambing time and they're causing mayhem on the island. Scott shows us how to use all the best calls and the top kit for the job. Sky Foxing Supremo Scott McKenzie is a man on a mission. It's lambing season and losing lambs to fox predation is a serious threat. Shepherdess Sandra tells us just how bad the problem can get on Sky. Now I've been with Scott for the last couple of days and we've been out after foxes and there's a very good reason at this time of year because you're, you're lambing. Mm -hmm. It can be a big problem if foxes get in amongst your lambs can't it? Oh, You've had yeah. trouble before? Yes absolutely and um, They'll just they'll randomly take lambs and in fact they'll not only just take the whole lamb but they'll maybe just take bits of a lamb and um, they sometimes maybe just take a tail or an ear and what they do is they take it to the den and they use it as a teething ring for the cubs so um, yeah so we've had lost, lots of losses over the years mm -hmm. um, between lambs and chickens and um, ducks and all sorts of things yeah. So it is very important for the likes of Scott to Absolutely. keep on top of it. Absolutely, because otherwise there, there is no predator for the fox. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the animal that would have taken a fox doesn't live here anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really important that you keep the numbers down. Tonight Scott will be out with rifle, lamp and fox caller and he's not exactly short on those. Scott, you do a lot of calling when it comes to your foxing, but you probably do more calling than anybody else I've ever met. <laughs> uh, and you have a hell of a range of calls. Mm -hmm. Can you just go through your sort of favourite four or five? Yeah, I'd like to say, I've got lots of calls. I, I get a lot sent to me. But the ones that I my go-to calls all the time are, are this set that I keep on the lanyard. Um, just basic things like uh, mouse squeaker, you know, the, the pump. That's great for coaxing things in when you've got just a, a reluctant fox. It's uh, just sitting out there. You need it just a wee bit more. It's it's not too harsh. You can bring that in. Uh, one I got sent from a friend in uh, Colorado. It's called the Bunny Bomb, and uh, again, it gives a nice uh, squalling sort of uh, scream. Um, and that's what I find. Uh, I, there's a lot of calls that are what I would call too too pitch perfect. These are calls that uh, they don't vary. It's synthetic, whereas uh, I feel you need to get one that's it's uh, you have to play a little bit. It's more natural. Good old Aussie tenter field. Um, a lot of people find it really difficult to use and and give up quite quickly. Um, but if you sort of uh, keep at it, I think it took me a long time, uh, you can get uh, quite a good uh, squall out of this one as well. <coughs> Varmint Inc. Uh, call uh, from a friend of mine in California. Now he's uh, a custom call maker and he sent me this call when I was in, uh, out on a trip in Arizona do, uh, hunting coyotes and I didn't get a chance to use it much while I was out there but when I came back and uh, tried it on the foxes it brings them in. You've um, used this a lot in the filming we've done together. Yes, yeah. It, uh, it is the first choice I go to all the time. And just remind everyone what it sounds like. <coughs> That doesn't sound like something dying and in pain, I don't know what does. Scott's last task of the day is to make sure his own rifle setup is still on zero. It's a tough task having to test top end kit for the show, but someone's got to do it, and later on Scott tries out Byron's own Kimber rifle and Schwarzky scope combo.
Well, those uh, three shots, you can see the second and the, the third one, nice grouping. With darkness falling and equipment tuned, we follow Scott out into the field. To reach all the corners of this remote island, the traditional walking and calling approach is in order. Scott selects his caller. The tried and tested Varmint's Inc. call is first up. Persistent Colin is rewarded with a flash of eyes and Scott readies the rifle in anticipation. A better look provides positive identification. It's definitely a fox and it's currently in a shootable position with a decent backstop. It's not far below the skyline but it's well within comfortable shooting range and Scott is confident in his abilities. It may not be obvious through the camera, but in the clear sight picture of the Schwarzky, there is no doubt the shot is on. The satisfying thud that follows indicates a good contact. Everything looks right with the shot. I'm certain it's a dog fox. We smelt him earlier, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We picked up the smell before we seen him, so uh, hopefully we'll uh, see no, him. I couldn't see him very well through the camera. How was he sitting? It was laid down uh, from when we first called him in and he decided to take a big, big arc around on us. He wasn't committing. Um, then we, in our first position, I see him uh, just sit there on the on the edge of the hill. And it looked to me from way back there that yeah, he was just sitting out there, interested in the call but wasn't committing. Yeah. So uh, as we stalked into him, I could see him through the scope and uh, it was laid down every time I heard a bit of a noise or a squeak, sit up to see what it was. So just a little bit of a lip squeak made it sit up and present itself nicely. Yeah. And uh, pretty pleased at that distance as well. Dog fox? Yep. Just where I put the bullet as well. Where's the bullet gone through, Scott? Just under the and in the neck. Just under the chin? Yep. That's all he was presenting me. Because he was curled up, wasn't he? He was, he was just sat on this outcrop. He decided to curl up here and uh watch us. <laughs> yep. He was interested in the calls we were given and yeah, like I say, he, he came in from my first initial call, but a little bit of noise from myself. I thought I'd ruined it at that point, but uh, he decided to do a big sweep around, plonk himself on this high little outcrop and uh, watch us for a while. So we uh, gave him a stalk in and uh, we managed to cover some ground pretty quickly in the dark and uh, get ourselves in a wee bit of a hillock. And uh, get a shot at him. Fox number one for the night. Yep. A bit of a mangy, t mangy looking tail. Yep. But otherwise. He's, uh, it's a long tail. It is a very long tail. He's, apart from that, he's in fantastic condition, but uh, this tail has seen better days. It, uh, it feels very, uh, I think it's had a break in it at some point, by the feel of it. One shot and one fox in the bag, that's good economy, but Scott's work is far from over. The next night is extremely windy, but Scott is undeterred. He's back out, driving to a different part of Sky to take up arms once more against the Vulpine invasion. The rules of the game are still the same, a solo lamping mission with Scott juggling caller lamp and rifle. So Scott, I've, I've joined you back again on Sky. Again, we're after foxes. Um, but I brought you a couple of toys to play with. Uh -huh. uh, my own rifle, uh, which has actually not long been reviewed on the show. 
and also some rather nice optics. Just talk me through it from start to finish and give me give me your opinion mm -hmm. of, of the stuff that I've brought and how and how useful it's been while we've been out. Yep, I was regarding the rifle. I was very impressed with the setup. Um, very very light indeed. I had reservations uh, regarding it's obviously being so light with taking a shot and barrel flip, um, but. Absolutely rock steady. Every shot I've took through it, no barrel flip, clear image, uh, no loss of image when the shot's taken, and the Swarovski scopes as well. Um, absolutely fantastic gathering every bit of light possible. The clarity is just, it's, you know, you pay for what, what you get and uh, they're worth the price tag, in my opinion. And uh, this one has an illuminated dot. Mm -hmm. um, was that the first time you'd used an illuminated dot? Yeah, first time I've used an illuminated dot, and I found it very helpful for drawing your eye into your target. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also got a you know, one of the latest moderators on the market. Mm -hmm. how, how did you find that? Because you, you shoot moderators on your own rifles. Yep, yeah, uh, when I compare it to the moderators on my own, uh, this again, absolute delight. It's lightweight. It just works well with the whole setup of this rifle. Um, again, I had reservations about barrel flip. Nothing at all. Mm -hmm. It was just nice, crisp and steady. And the other thing uh, which we've been using as part of this setup has been um, 105 grain Gecko ammo. Mm -hmm. um, I know last time I was with you, I left you a box which you ran through your own rifles. Yes, and you yeah. were quite impressed with it. Grouping was and fantastic. what about through this rifle? Again. Uh, I know I showed you a cheeky wee group before I came to see you. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. We went out uh, and we put a few shots to a target in the dark. Absolutely pleased as punch with with the grouping. Um, again, I think it's uh, a testament just to the whole setup: rifle, scopes, ammunition. Mm. They've just worked hand in hand. Um, worked really well. Well, it's. I still use good old lead acid batteries. Obviously, they're heavy. But uh, I have a, a harness that can distribute the weight of the batteries across my back, so I find it no problem at all then to carry two, three batteries at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, using a light force lamp, coals on a lanyard, uh, various other torches for illumination just to, when I'm skipping from sort of coal area to coal area, you know, it's giving me a safe passage through these places. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's, have it all on my person. I don't have to rely on uh, keeping lots of gear in the vehicle. Just like last night, calling quickly results in an interested party. Scott tries to squeak it into range. Confidently, Scott shoulders the rifle, but as we're soon to find out, all doesn't go to plan. Now, we've been out tonight. We got into a fox, mm -hmm. didn't take too long, but all didn't go quite to plan. No. Now, we've actually reviewed the footage, but tell us the story. Uh, yeah, we've uh, gone to a fox. We'd, uh, we gave a bit of a call. See a very faint uh, glint of eyes out in the, in the rushes, so we just moved onto a wee bit higher ground, uh, a bit closer in, and uh, again, picked the eyes up. Uh, it's just a fox laying in the rushes. Again, did not want to stand. Uh, and show itself. We couldn't take a shot because I couldn't see the, the whole body image. Um, you know, we'll give it a few calls again, try and get it shifting. It did get up, it moved, but at this point, I think it just cut us on the wind. It just cut uh, uh, you know, our, uh, our scent. And as I was watching it through the scope, it, it had a definite limp about it. So I had to make the decision as soon as it stops to take the shot. Uh, it stopped, I took the shot, and to me in the scope it went down. 
and then within obviously it was second or two it got back up and started trotting along um a bit bewildered by that because i watched it go down in the scope it's, it felt good it, it looked right but after reviewing the footage it was obvious and plain to see that once we slowed it down the fox just moved very slightly at the last second and i should imagine the the, uh, the crack of the shot just with her being slightly injured as well made her just roll over it's good in a way to be able to review the footage of those misses as, as much as the hits you just, it gives you the answers to the questions why have i missed mm -hmm. what's happened there and we've we've worked it out and we know it's a clean miss mm. move on to the next one Moving on, Scott heads to a favoured area opposite a pine forest. Switching calls to the electronic U-caller, he lets it play while he makes ready with the rifle. <coughs> Off camera we see a fox. Scott wastes no time in clearing the decks for action. The wind has now whipped up to nearly gale force and with Scott struggling to lamp and shoot, he hands the light to Byron, who now has to operate lamp and camera at the same time. It's a difficult task but not beyond red and the show must go on. Moments later, Scott takes the shot. It's a decisive moment as Scott atones for his earlier miss and makes all the equipment juggling worth it. Playing the footage back shows the fox went down instantly. You don't get much better than that. All that's left is to retrieve the carcass. It's always good to inspect downrange performance and this time the fox didn't duck. The bullet ran true and certainly did its job killing the fox instantly. Scott is pleased his bullet placement is still spot on and has taken a liking to the Kimber. She was tucking herself out the wind. It is quite windy and a cool night tonight. So, uh, another one down. The waxing moon means we'll have to leave Sky for a couple of weeks as lamping conditions will be poor. But you can bet when the lunar cycle moves on, we'll be back with Scott hitting those wary foxes. Scott and Byron, one fox short of a trio there. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Shooting organisations are fighting a change to legal aid that could see country sports workers put at a serious disadvantage. Under a new scheme the government is considering, legal aid would be apportioned randomly from a pool of large companies. As a result, gamekeepers and stalkers may not be able to afford expensive solicitor's fees and would only have access to a general solicitor with no expertise in firearms or wildlife law. A government consultation is open until the 4th of June. Follow the link on screen to respond. Kubota has unveiled a new range of petrol-powered utility vehicles, welcoming the RTV 400 Ci and RTV 500 to its RTV family. I'd like to introduce you to the new Kubota RTV 500. This is a new introduction in the ut uh, utility vehicle market. It's uh, a new product for Kubota into the UK, and the RTV 500 comes complete with a two-cylinder Kubota 16 horsepower engine which is coupled up to the variable hydrostatic transmission. The variable hydrostatic transmission gives it a unique characteristic when you're driving. It's absolutely safe, it gives you total controllability in all types of terrain. Following discussions with the British Association for Shooting and Conservation, Virgin Mobile has agreed to lift age-related restrictions on shooting websites, which had been incorrectly categorised as over-18 sites by content filters. BASC has announced it will approach other mobile network providers if problems are reported. Three parties of the Dutch coalition government have proposed legislation that would ban all game shooting. Under the suggested new law, shooting would only be allowed on a basis of case-by-case -case approval from the authorities. Exemptions to the ban would be granted only for the control of certain species that are overpopulated, that cause damage or are thought to be a danger. And finally, the RSPB has had its claim to be impartial on shooting matters challenged after it emerged that the charity's head of investigations, Bob Elliott, gave an address at the League Against Cruel Sports Gunning for Change seminar. Countryside Alliance chairman Barney White Spunner fears the move has compromised the RSPB's claim to be neutral. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. 
We're out every Monday, 7.30pm UK time. This is The Shooting Show.